If you're building a racing game, at some point in your future, you're bound to build an AI system. An AI that is capable of being competitive and an AI that is capable of knowing what's in front of it, so it can break, accelerate and dodge obstacles what is in front of it. So that's the main focus for this video. We're going to take a look at how you can build an AI system that can follow the waypoints that we give it and an AI that can break whenever another AI is in front of it. So let's get started. All the AI behavior is controlled by this one script. Now down here we'll find the AI components. For right now what we have is only the node system. Now let's add a sensor system. And before we add the sensor system, we need some variables. So first we need a float variable for the threshold. And then we're going to need a method to run the traffic detection every single frame. To build the sensor system, we're going to use Unity's physics raycast. To use, to use the raycast system, we're going to say if physics.raycast. So for the origin, we're going to have to define another transform. To do that, we're going to define a new public game object and we're going to call it front sensor. Now, since this is a game object, we can take that front sensor and we're going to say front sensor.transform.position. For the next argument, we're going to need a direction. So we're going to use again the front sensor.transform.forward. And then we're going to need the maximum distance. So to check the maximum distance, we're going to use this threshold that I just defined earlier. So we're going to copy that, we're going to paste it in here, and then we're going to open the brackets. Now to help us visualize this physics raycast system, we're going to use a debug draw line system. So in order to use that, we're going to need a output from this raycast. To get the output, we're going to add in another component and we're going to say out hit. And now we have a hit information. So in the draw line, now we can say this hit variable dot point. And that will draw us a line from the starting position to wherever this raycast has hit. Now we obviously don't want to just draw a line every time we hit this AI driver collider. We want to vary the throttle input. So let's add some brackets in here and let's get some more input from this hit raycast. Now the key value that we want to extract from that raycast hit is the raycast distance. To get the raycast distance, we simply say hit dot distance. That will return the distance from the transform position all the way over to the hit object. And obviously we need to pass this into a float variable. So let's define a new one. Now since we have this hit distance variable, we need a else statement for when the collider doesn't hit anything. So we're simply going to add a else statement and we're going to say distance is equal to one. This distance is equal to one means that the AI can push the throttle all the way over to one. Now here we have a vertical axis that is equal to one. And now we're going to make it able to accelerate at half a throttle just by adding hit distance. Now the vertical axis will vary depending on the collider it hits. We're simply going to save that and we're going to hit play. Okay, this is our final product. What I have in here is three AI drivers. And if I hit play, these should align and they should never collide between each other. So let's hit play and let's follow one of these and see what happens. Okay, there we have it. All the three AI has successfully completed a lap and it keeps going. And obviously building this AI is no good if we can't actually use it. So what I'm going to do now is close everything and see how the game feels when we actually try to play it. So enjoy.
If you've made it this far into the video, all I want to say is thank you for your continuous support. It really means a lot to me and I hope I'll see you in the next videos. Take care.